you wait, Mr. Holmes. You wait. You have, you, it will be me that's the last laugh. Just you see. That's strange. I wasn't expecting anyone. Hmm. Well, I'll let me off, Mr. Holmes. I'll uh, let you know if anything that happens. Yes, that would be excellent, Holmes. You, Inspector. Good night. You are, Inspector. I'm still on the steps. <laughs> Mrs. Hudson? This way, please. I hope my unexpected uh, visit hasn't inconvenienced you. Well, I was doing some tests on the river that investigation, but uh, I suppose I'll have to see you now. Please don't stand on ceremony. Do take a seat. Uh, one moment, please. <laughs> you wear a veil. Are you in mourning? Um, yes, I am. But actually, this veil is, is more in the way of a disguise. Uh, something you are yourself well versed in, I believe. My chief advisor suggested that I, I take this unprecedented step as I made this visit. I'm sure you can't be unaware that there is a, a homicidal maniac currently stalking the streets of London. Indeed. But he only stalks his victims at night and in the early hours of the morning. And these have all been, without exception, prostitutes. So I'm sure your visit here will go unnoticed. Your Majesty. Bravo, Mr. Holmes. I can see now that the uh, reports of your exceptional observational powers are to be fully believed. On the contrary, ma'am, the golden coach bearing the insignia of the arm. I should have been parked outside of this prison for the past 20 minutes. And I must have been first to perhaps my city. Carry on like this, Mr. Holmes. I shall find life will soon be decorating you for services to our great nation. I do hope you'll forgive this intrusion, but it was of the utmost importance that I see you. So this is 221 Meek Baker Street. I've read many descriptive passages about it and all the interesting artifacts contained therein. I feel I already know many of its secrets. I hope not, Val. The, uh, the written accounts of my research <coughs> are to some extent a little uh, exaggerated. Ah. Well, please, Mr. Holmes, my time is short. This recent spate of murders in Whitechapel... I thought that would be the reason for your visit. Can you believe that the so-called gentlemen of the press are now suggesting that one of my own relatives is, is guilty of these atrocities? My dearest grandson, oh, Prince Eddie. Is completely innocent of any involvement in the crimes. Any casual spectator of the royal social calendar would have observed that Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Paris, was away in York when the chapel murder occurred, and again in Albert Gallery, Scotland, at the time of the last murder. I also believe that your Physician, so when you go, has recently come under some suspicion. Yes, in spite of the fact that he is 72 years of age, and last October suffered a very serious stroke which left him partially paralyzed. Mm. <laughs> I have other substantial evidence which will clear both of their names if ever it became necessary. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I am most comforted to receive your insurance your assurance of their innocence. I do implore you, Mr. Holmes, to use whatever gifts you have to catch this fiend. Never has such a barbaric rogue stalked the streets of our fine city and inflicted such a reign of bloody terror on its good people. Two murders now in one night. This man must be captured and put behind bars before he can kill again. The lowest and the poorest of the people of this land are my responsibility, Mr. Holmes. I must afford them whatever protection I can. England expects, Mr. Holmes. And Mr. Holmes expects to deliver, Your Majesty. I will work ceaselessly until this village is behind bars. I will not cease until this Jack the Ripper has been caught. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I knew we could depend on you. Do tell me, what became that giant swim after the rat? Mm -hmm. I have to give it, ma'am. Well, he was about to nibble for a pair of Dr. Watson's woolly underpants. <laughs> I'm just going to get a glass of water. Ah, yes. Actually, I was 
trouble you decided it. Oh. <laughs> oh. To sign this for my grandson, he's a great admirer of your work. I was wondering if you could sign this for Mrs. Hudson. Of course, you would never believe the, uh, the spoken account of our meeting without some written proof. <laughs> Oh, yes, um, Dora. Dora? Griselda. Yeah. <laughs> Euphemia. <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> Lolita. Bert. Hudson. Oh, I shall fetch you another. My peacock quill should suffice. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rome's I. Oh, so what have we got here then? Is this what you do when you're on your own? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> goodness. Good Lord. What is that horrible garb you're wearing? You're like the late born in some awful Russian play. <laughs> we are not amused, Inspector. That's it. You mean we've got the voice right? <laughs> and your shape is remarkable too. <laughs> my goodness. If my eyes aren't deceiving me, you lost two feet in the and put on a mouse like the stove. <laughs> yes, Miss Rhodes, I do declare you have transformed yourself into a dumpling. <laughs> a very generous one, that. Ah, Inspector. Your Majesty, I'm going to allow me to present to you um, one of your most obedient and loyal subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector of First Class Frederick George Avalon. Here. How do you do? <laughs> yes, very well, thank you. Good evening, sir. Here, I'm just wrong. Excuse us a second, love. Uh, <laughs> did you ever tell you about the case of John Gilbert Cunningham? Yeah, the one I saw. No, you never did. Well, you see, I'm glad you buy this room. Confiscated the two large jars of dynamite hidden in his trousers and said, Right, you're. You're in. 